Uh, I want to talk to you first a little bit uh, here. You know, you guys are coming in. Uh, first time interview over here, so don't be nervous. Uh, I want to ask you first, you know, you guys are like the dark horse coming into this matchup. There's a lot of team chemistry. How do you guys feel you guys prepared for Mexico City? Uh, as a team, we prepared uh, picking up our new fifth, Mortifies, in replace of Toy Soldier. Our chemistry has gotten a lot better. And I feel if we play the game that we're supposed to, we'll come out on top on every time. Hesse, I want to know who in your team you value in terms of play style and call outs and making sure your rotations are on point. Uh, our home player, Sneaky, he always keeps us in the game when we lose initials. And then our main slayer, Exclusive, if he's going off, he's doing his thing, follow up. All right, so I want to ask you, you guys are third rating team in Europe. Also, you have not had a good streak. You got a couple losses under your belt. How are you guys going to come out of this losing streak? Uh, we knew we were coming into this pool. It was the pool of death. You know, everyone in this pool is really good. So we came in with no expectations just to shoot our gun, see how well we can do, try to get a bit of momentum going. Because at the end of the day, pools don't really matter. It's like a safety net. It's what matters afterwards, you know. And also, your team, for those who don't know, make up a lot of countries, five, in six including your coach. What are those countries that you guys represent? Well, I'm from Ireland, Bruno's from, Dragons is from Spain, Vision's from Germany, Chid's from Scotland, and TJ is from Wales. So we're pretty international, all right. Yeah, that's a very international. Well, I think it's time to get this matchup started. Shake hands and uh, let's get started. <laughs> I like him. Yours is very interesting because at the same time, you may think you're good, but you go against the best and you're like, well, I need to get better. I need to play more or I need to stop rolling. So I just feel like with gears constantly improving and like players constantly getting better every day, it's a burden on like individuals to get better themselves. This event, what I think it's gonna to take to overcome like our biggest obstacle is me. I feel like I have to be the best teammate, be the best person, and continue leading my team as best as I can. So I try to put my teammates in the best positions for themselves and just where I can help them. That's my biggest role. My biggest role is to make sure I can put myself in position to help the best players in the game. Because I'll let them get the kill or something. I just wanna win. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the desk here at Gears Pro Circuit, Mexico City. Fallout here, joined alongside Ryan Fools, Golden Boy, and Colin the Crow himself. Clark, how you doing, my friend? Doing amazingly, <laughs> all right? Hey, look, don't doubt a crow. When you see him, there's usually death about. And today, Saturday, people start getting home. Teams are dying. Can't do it anymore. It's I like too the crow. early. It's too early for this. It's only 1.46 <laughs> p.m. It's never too early for the Southern Charm here with my man Colin, that's for sure. Ryan, can you match that? I really can't. What's I thought Colin was going to come out with something revolving a hungry dog in the yeah, in a, a, in a a trailer a park or something. <laughs> not yet. Not <laughs> yet. Got a hungry dog. He's got, he got, he got, got a hungry dog in a trailer park <laughs> with a with a can of food in the backyard rest. And all you gotta do is give him a bone. <laughs> Feed him like a government mule. <laughs> <laughs> Feed him like a government mule, boy. Never <laughs> stops. Never stops. Too too much fun here at Gears Pro Circuit, Mexico City. We got two teams coming up next. It's a big one. Can. The history repeat itself with a three-way tie in this, well, I, I call this one the pool of death. Can Mazer Gaming get upset by this Pride Stark squad that really just got kind of embarrassed by, by Space Station 2-0? They got embarrassed by Simplicity earlier in the day. That was a 7-1 map one, a 7-2, I believe, map two. Uh, this is a real tough outing for them. mazer has been playing well, except they've been dropping close. They've won some close matches and lost some. So they got to come out on top on this one if they want to get forward. Yep. Yeah, and speaking of the close matches, right? I mean, their games against Space Station Gaming all ended 7-6. So you had Damn 7-6, Impact 7-6. So one game that they won against Simplicity, that was another 7-6 on Old Town this time. Very close games. But if you look at Pride Stark, I just don't really think they are up to the task of taking out the likes of Major. Yeah, I, Major X done that, right? Hey, I do think Pride Stark, you know, I showed a little bit. These whole ideas of seven sixes for Major to me are kind of a telling story of that team as a whole, right? The reason I say that is because that team is very, very good. They use very, very good teamwork. They play together a lot. But that being said, they always seem to come up short in terms. They always seem to come up short on Championship Sunday. So I want to see them kind of pull through this time. Yeah, well, there you have it. Looks like we are underway with the action and ready to go. Golden Boy and Colin. Mazer versus Pride Stark. Take it away. Thank you so much, Ryan and Fallout. Time to get into the action, Colin. And I'm pretty excited for this one. We're going to be going to Harbor for map number one here. And 
Harbor, uh, you know, very comfortable pick for a lot of these players in this competition. It's a good map. It's got all the basics, all the bases covered as well here. But we're going to be on board, starting it off with Chidwick from Pride Stark. Yeah, Chidwick is a great support player. He's really good with that Lancer. Every time he shoots it, it is absolutely true, especially if he hits that active, which he just did. He got a couple shots there on Xenon and Hezzy as they came to the top stern area. So you look like they're going to try to take control of this altitude mm -hmm. and then slowly start to pinch down on the rest of the map once they get these shots on. Beautiful back A by TJ right there, though. Nicely done. He's going to continue to maintain control over here by the winch, but a good stun is actually going to take him out of the action. And that was a great collapse there as well from Pride Stark, really just forcing out. Uh, actually, no, I'm, I stand corrected. That was not uh, Pride Stark. But in, regardless, that was just a good play, forcing that player off of the winch. Well, you know, they threw the smoke perfectly. They knew they got the stun. Everybody collapses down on him. That's a great pincer move. I love how they brought pressure from both sides. They kept mm -hmm. it between a rock and a hard place, and sometimes you just can't get out of those. But here we go with Pride Stark having to play a little bit of defense here. They have the point advantage, but as you see Mazer moving on B, they've decapped it. Now Hezzy. they're starting to try to take care of it. It looks like business as usual for them, and Pride Stark is going to have to back up and really turtle up here and try to keep this triple cap from coming through. And just an FYI for the viewers at home, Pride Stark, they're going to be your COG team, or excuse me, your red team, your swarm, and then Mazer will be on the red side. So just uh, an FYI for everyone, but Mazer will take that first round there one to zero just very well executed Colin and no surprise I mean look at this you start off with Hezzy dropping five out of the gate not bad for a round one showing hey look maybe that interview pre-match gave him a little bit of energy gave him a little bit of oomph in his step he said look I'm on the bright lights I'm on the big stage it's time for me to put on a show this team's been impressive I would say right yes you, you take out space station gaming in some close matchups you struggle against simplicity but those were not those are not like easy games at all, right? We're talking 7-4, 7-5, and both of their losses on Forge and Slab. I think overall, like Mazer, they have certainly been uh, very impressive in this group. And if you're Pride Stark, you know that you're going up against a, uh, a really just an uphill battle here against Mazer. I think they're, Mazer's coming into this one knowing that this is their game to win, basically. Yeah, this is their game to win, and Pride Stark's got to do something out of the ordinary to get that win. And Hesse, let's see if he can start out getting the shots in as he did. Big kill there on Visions. He's going to take care of that winch area for now. I think they've backed him off. They're just waiting for the smoke to clear. They can't see through it and see the x-rays like we can. So now Hezzy knows he has a clear path for a flank here. He's going to be coming up this winch side to the stern, trying to get onto Dragon. Dragon now in cover, but a big concrete block comes out, takes down Hezzy. So now he's going to rotate back down and overlook B and try to get some good Lancer fire in on those two members of Pride Stark that are still there at the neutral hill in this first half and wait for somebody to come off respawn and go down there to challenge it. Yeah, you're going to need uh, the support there, but for right now, at the very least, the task has been accomplished of forcing the players away from B. You're going to have that winch control. You kind of cut this map up the way that you want it if you're a Mazer Gaming. Once again, folks, just a reminder, Mazer will be your red team. Pride Stark are your blue team. We'll make sure to get those graphics reversed as soon as possible. But, you know, getting back into the action at hand, I just really like the way that Mazer just, they're they, they letting Pride Stark just go right into their hand here, play into their hand, and it's been working out quite beautifully. Now it's going to be Sneak here in the 1v2. Wisely enough, though, backing away, recognizing he's not going to be able to, to Superman that and win that whole fight by himself. He's going to need the support of his teammates, and you just got to know when to live to fight for another day. Hey, look, he's playing his life, and that's brilliant. He knows he's still got a 4-on-4 now, so this is when he's time for him to push back in. They didn't have the numbers advantage at first. They evened it out, and now they can push up and try to make something happen. They get the kill on Dragon right there. Three members of Mazer down here at the B Hill, and they're facing only two members of Pride Stark who can actually actually fight back against him. The triple cap was threatened, though, by Hezzy. Hezzy realizes they're coming back off spawn. He rotates back out. The high IQ plays by Mazer Gaming are actually super impressive. Through Look these at the way that rounds. Hezzy was able to just attract so much attention over to him as well, right? He was by A, forced two players, and that third player off the respawn. That was huge. That was just a lot of eyes that were really just focused on one player from Mazer Gaming. And now that means that they continue to control the pace of this game. They're going to continue to build upon this lead here and it's looking pretty good for Mazer thus far. If we take a look at that overhead map, though, finally, they're going to start to, to pincer uh, some of these players and, and try and get them out of those power positions. And, and this is the Pride Stark that I needed to see here early on, right? Force them out of those spots, get map control once again, and really make them pay for getting a little overzealous in the beginning. That was a great play call by Pride Stark as well. Vision knows he said he gets the call out that Hezzy's full red. He charges him. All he has to do is try to touch him over that corner to either get a down or a chunk. He gets the chunk, and now he can continue to move back toward B Hill, help his teammates out, 
So the rotation's much crispier right now for Pride Stark, but the overextension by Mortifies trying to get to the A hill to decap that to make sure nobody's getting any points whatsoever. Trying to get a standstill. If he can get a cap right here, that might spell the end of this round for Pride Stark and win it for Mazer. Dragon sees that the cap comes through on A. He Dragon has to push forward into this hill. Here comes another member of Pride Stark. They're gonna get the decap here. So the triple cap will come out. Lancer's out on the home hill of Mazer. Here they come. If this goes on for too much longer, Mazer's gonna lose this round just on the fact that they can't cap it quick enough to get the round win, but they clear out Pride Stark. They oh, need man. just a cap. Oh. They gotta clear them out. They can't clear them out, Colin, and that was all that they needed there. They get that cap. Five seconds remaining, and that is basically going to be the round. Very well done from Mazer Gaming. And, I mean, just really, like, those are those moments of big swing moments. If they were able to stop them right at that, at that last moment, that would be huge. But I think, believe I may have gotten my stuff reversed here, given how uh, graphics have just not flipped quite yet. But regardless, so we're sitting at one-to-one -one in the count right now. And, Colin, regardless of the fact, though, both teams really showing us a lot of, uh, just, you know, they're showing us a lot, and this is what you need to have at this part in the pool, because next up is going to be the brackets. Well, Pride Stark right now is mainly playing for Pride. They're 0-2. they got to get a win on the board. They're looking their best to try to make something happen right here. If they could knock off a team like Mazer, when they start their bracket run later this afternoon, that'll give them a great confidence boost. Mazer is no easy out for any team on the circuit, and if you can beat them, if you can start hot against them, that's a great sign moving forward. The Boltox and the Hammer Burst. We start out with double secondaries on the map, and I'm gonna see both teams actually send one person each to pick up those secondaries. The other three members will all kind of spread across the winch of the stern area, and we'll have the same fights that we normally have. We see Visions take out Hezzy, and the last member of Mazer on that middle was Mortifies, and that's a big double kill by Visions to start this round off. The action, though, continues on here, as we're gonna be with Dragon from Pride Stark. And, you know, I, we had a chance to watch your Space Station Gaming matchup on uh, Dam, and it was not pretty at all. Though the scoreline did reflect a uh, closer game, there was, uh, I believe there was a player that actually ended up, like, timing out out of that one. Uh, so it didn't really work out in their favor. But now, though, Pride Stark getting a couple more rounds here. It's a good start here, as you had mentioned, Colin, what you want to see early on here. Vision being that uh, difference maker early on. Yeah, big double kill by him. Really opens up that winch area, allows for him to either rotate around to the stern, get a good flank, or like they called for it, he went straight across their plat area toward the cargo side and helped start off that triple cap, which helped end the round quickly. Mazer hovering over the sniper rifle. You usually see some kind of marksman rifle up here at the stern. It allows you to look down at the other two levels of this map to that first level where the home hills are in the first half, and then that very bottom level where B Hill is. So now you're going to see probably a difference in strategy for both these teams. Probably send an extra member to that top stern fight, because once you get that snipe, it's all over but crying for those people down at B. Vision and Hezzy being the superstars early on when we go into round four here, both at nine kills apiece. You can see that split coming through as well. The fight from the middle from Winch over to the stern. But we're all eyes on Sneak currently. So he's going to rotate around here. Knows that TJ is going to be a little weak. He should be able to do some damage against him, but he's going to wait this one out because his teammates ended up losing up top. And that high ground, that's not the position that you want to lose out on. So Sneak really just needs to try and stay alive here, wait for some teammates to come off spawn. Goes in, though, to try and make that play, and he's all going to be by himself in an island pretty much. He needs to make some moves happen. He knows that TJ is going to be weak. He can't do anything about that one as he goes down. Back to the respawn he goes now. Even then, despite that upper you know, map control that the Pride Star can manage to obtain, it really was just a, you know, it, it's been Mazer holding down, at least gaining some points, but it's still early on in this game, Colin. So this is going to give Pride Stark plenty of opportunities to be able to push up. Mortifies, oh, Mortifies gets the double. Wow. Visions and Dragon were not ready for that one at all. Now it's going to be up to Hezzy, and he's going to clear out up top as well. That was a beautiful double. So as I was mentioning, Pride Stark, they started to get some territory. They started to get some map control. But when you have the high impact plays like that, it really sets that tone.
and that's great by them. They actually come back, though. That's a good little retake now. You're getting the positioning on the map. You're able to set up, get your members back off respawn, and you're going to see a push toward B. They're going to know that Sneak is on that winch, so if you're at the B hill, you can't actually pop your head up and down and try to fight those fights. You're going to have to stay in cover and try to either shoot over it, shoot around it, make something happen, because as soon as you come out, look at this. Big shots by Sneaky. He's just looking down on him. He's trying to make as much damage as possible, make it as easy for Exclusive down there as possible, but they get taken out at the B hill. Sneaky wins a big 1v1 at winch killing off Dragon, and now he's gonna have to rotate around. That sniper will be coming back up very shortly. Gotta pay attention to the long shot. We still have plenty of game left to play here in round number four here on Harbor. Pride Stark are gonna be the ones up two to one. Once again, I, I mentioned it before, but I just wanna let everyone know that the team names are flipped. You have Pride Stark, they are your coalition team. Mazer are your swarm team. We'll hopefully try and get that one addressed uh, eventually. But as of right now, though, Hezzy, he has that long shot. He's going to look to put it to use, Colin. Yeah, he's going to have to try to pop somebody's head right here. Ooh. He might be thinking a little bit too much, though. You see how he went from one member to the next. He was thinking, oh, I can get an easy shot here. And then he misses nice. the easy. Nice. But gives somebody a free haircut. Chitwick goes down in the B Hill. He's going to get Gets a body shot down. on TJ. That's a down for him. Love to see it, Golden Boy. Absolutely huge. And that is going to send them back a big respawn as well. Lots of time that is basically going to be wasted. And Pride Stark, they get, the tr they get three down out of that, despite the best efforts of Hezzy. Pride Stark still managed to fight back. Oh, my word. Hezzy, what is going on with you, man? You are hitting everything. But it, oh, the flashy plays are the flashy plays. If you're not getting a follow-up and Hezzy moves in, he can't do anything with it. And that is basically going to be the 2-2, two -two, though. But still, wow. I mean, everything about that was just threw me off for a loop. I had no idea what to do, Colin. Hezzy had to time. get that kill in order to save that round because they were de they were decapping the hill. He gets that kill. The round ends shortly thereafter. So they hold on to win that round. And it's mainly off of the back of all those kills you saw Hezzy get at the end there. And I'm guaranteeing you right now, Hezzy must have some kind of cleaner he's got in his back pocket because that scope must have been crystal clear for him to hit that third headshot, baby. That was nasty. That was just a nasty shot. I mean, you got to have the you, big moments, right? Big play moments. And Hezzy's going to take that one, I think, to the grave with him. He's happy about that. 13 kills for him. Vision 14 still going to be the superstars for both of their teams now. And we end up getting a, a block, I believe. That's going to be down low in the mid toward that dock area. But the battle will be for the long shot right here, right by the stern. Those are some great smokes by Vision. He actually gets through into that middle cut area, mortifies, rolls back Runs in, away with it. Gets the snipe, and he's going to have to try to roll out. Oh. But Vision, he chases the first. He's going to take Hezzy off, which is absolutely huge with the way that Vision, his, uh, Hezzy's been playing. And now Vision, he's going to chase the second. Mortifies. He looked hungry. Mortifies wow. shot him down there, so he's able to hold on to the long shot for now. And, you know, Vision, man, he had the beat on him. You thought that that was going to be a win for Vision, but mortifies some exquisite movement, utilizing that wall, bouncing off of it effectively. Managing to stay alive and take that very important weapon with him. Mortifies another head, uh, another headshot, and that is going to be another one. Uh, two kills for him on TJ and Chidwick. Now it's going to be Dragon up above, but he's going to be dead to rights at that point in time. 20 second respawn, by the way, Colin. It's only going to get worse at this point, but Mazer do have the lead, and we finally got those graphics swapped, so there is a god. There is a god, and it is five. <laughs> V2 with one member coming off spawn. That's TJ. Take your advantage right now. There's only two members of Pride Stark alive. They're going to have to force themselves into the issue at their Same own home time. hill. Look at the brick coming out. They're so now he has to rotate out. TJ tries his hand. He gets taken out. Chinwick is still hurt. Nobody can really push in there because the, the crossfire is just too much from Mazer Gaming. And it looks like they might be able to close this out if they can just get a kill and a down on Chinwick. I don't know. Dragon gets the kill on exclusive, but he's going to be down here. Now it's up to Vision, but he can't get in. Oh, he denies it just for that brief moment. Is it enough? Warrior's going to be in the action now. Does he get the kill? Warrior's going to go back as well. So Warrior's dead. One player left alive. That's going to be TJ, and that will do it. I mean, it was very close there, Pride Stark. But when you get into that kind of rhythm, when you get into that flow, it's so tough because you're going in there like lemmings, right? One after the other, after the other, after the other. There's never really gonna be a moment where you're able to follow up, especially when you're talking about 20 second respawns. He took, he took the words almost right out of my mouth. I was gonna go with Slaughterhouse instead of lemmings. You know pigs to slaughter, lemmings. baby. You know what? Poor, I like it That's though. how I know you're I from take the it. South. I might have to steal that one, the lemmings. Talking about the pigs. <laughs> pigs to slaughter, baby. Pigs to slaughter. 22 second respawn now. It's essentially gonna be a uh, little game of Execution. <laughs>
<laughs> it's, a, it's classic years of war, basically, because what you're going to do is value your life more than you ever have prior to this. Because if you lose a member off initial and you go 5v4, you know you have an advantage somewhere on the map. You usually get a great rotation, and then it becomes 5v3, 5v2, and next thing you know, you're out and out of the round. Mortify just managed to snag that long shot, and he gets the heck out of there. Doesn't even look back. Sneak gets the kill on TJ. That's a headshot. And now Dragon, who's pushing up onto Hezzy. Hezzy should be able to win this, and he does just that. Wins that fight, that's three down. This should be the push. This should be the game if Mortifies can get this angle. There is no way, no how you should lose this round right now. You get three dead off the initial. You know that they're going to be down there at the B. You've got the snipe. That's a body shot. Helps get the down, but it doesn't matter because his teammate Woo! gets to pick him up aboard. He knows he's going to reset to a single position, gets the headshot there on Chidwick. That's great knowledge by Mortifies to know about the reset positioning on the revive. I do, though. I, I got to give credit where credit is due to the Pride Star players because the, the fact that he managed to stay alive long enough and keep that fight going allowed his teammates to come right back into the action. These are significantly longer respawns, Colin. So if you don't have the bodies to support, the game could be over. So you got to give credit to that player who managed to hold it down for as long as he did. Oh, yeah. They were able to fend this off. Visions, he gets missed right there. Mortifies was looking to make himself a little bit of a highlight real clip. He's going to come in on the flank. He sees one member down. He gets wow. the second, though. He doesn't have to get the first one that's down because he gets cleaned up. And now here comes Warrior trying oh, to fend off Warrior gets a double. He gets a gets double a with triple. the flag. And then the shot he kill. Oh. And a fourth. Come on, Warrior. Oh, show Warrior out has show up, baby. Come out to play, my friend. My goodness, and I don't think Mazer was expecting that is at all. The double with the nades, the Nasher follow-up, Colin absolutely filth. Hey, all of a sudden, worst case scenario, it just falls out from under your feet. You're like the old Wiley Coyote standing off the edge of the cliff. You don't realize you're already out there. Gravity sets in, and here comes the triple cap. Pride Stark has evened it up in the first half, three to three, and I did not see this going this way before this round or this matchup started. Mazer Gaming needs to focus in right here. They can't drop this matchup. This is not a team you should lose against if you're Mazer with the, the heat that you came into this event with, yeah. knocking out a denial out of the 2K prior to this event. Seems like some trash talk was being exchanged as well, so uh, I think that's going to be very fun, right? <laughs> you know, always like to see the trash talk here on the main stage. But now we get the reset. We're back to the 12-second respawn. It's a tied game, so it's anyone's ball game at this point in time. TJ is going to get that first kill on Immortifies, winning the initial. But here comes Sneak, and I think Sneak has a point to prove. Can Sneak get another? He follows it up. That's going to be two for Sneak, and he's on the prowl. Chidwick, get over here, boy. I'm coming after you because he's so weak. Oh, but Chidwick makes him pay around the corner. Sneak got a little ambitious there, and Chidwick made him pay for that one. Yeah, Chidwick doing exactly what he has to do for his team there. But here comes the triple cap. Him and Warrior are going to have to make something happen against Xenon here. The Lancer fire comes in. Xenon needs to get one of these kills, but he's going to get picked off by Chidwick. So they are able to fend off the push of Mazer. That's a smart play right there. Chidwick knows that his teammate is going to get down anyway. Hits him with the melee for the instant down. Picks him up. He's going to have full health as soon as he picks him back up. That's a high IQ play by Chidwick. I love to see when teammates can re re relay that and get it done quick enough. Well, you got to make things fast, right? With the way that this pace of the game has been moving, you have to operate at that kind of speed. You got to make those snap decisions because that's going to make or break you. Two players down now for Pride Stark. It's going to be Vision and TJ. On the other side, though, we're going to be with Chidwick now, who also is going to just get destroyed by Lancer Fire and the follow up from Xena. Now that leaves F wide open, you got to have Pride Stark fight their way out of this one. On board with Dragon now. Got two members of Mazer in front of him. Can Dragon stay alive? He gets the kill on Xenon. The follow up. It's going to be Hezzy. Hezzy's had one hell of a game, but he needs to stay alive now, Colin. TJ's going to be right in front of him. And look at that. He gets the down on Hezzy. So now Chidwick and TJ, they fend that off again. They're down by almost six, 70 points at this point. You're going to have a 130 to 62 split or so when it comes through with the hill cap. So Pride Stark is in that, they're in that arena where they're going to have to make one big coordinated push mm -hmm. and get an entire wipe so that they can get through and kill off Mazer and get another triple cap. You're and gonna it, need another clutch play. And at this point in time, it's gonna be very difficult. You're talking about 12 seconds now, right? 12 second respawn. They're gonna be right back in the action before you can get across that map. And if you got Sneak shredding the way that he is, I cannot see that comeback happening at all. Dragon's gonna have to run away from this one. And 
Xenon as well as Mortify surrounding him. Yeah, you're basically done at that point. F is wide open for the taking. Vision in the last gasp effort to just try and like preserve some dignity here. I don't think it's really going to matter all that much because the points are in the favor of Mazer, and that is going to be a GG on this round, giving Mazer four points. But that was, uh, I tell you, man, Pride Stark, they opened their mouth. They got a little ambitious. They tried to talk some crap, and Mazer made them pay in this round. I love the way that Mazer played that round. That, to me, will always favor Mazer Gaming. Their teamwork is T1. They trust each other beyond all belief. They know that if they can just get their setups and be able to make sure that they get the right callouts, they know where the numbers are, that's the kind of strategy that Mazer has to keep moving forward with. Chidwick immediately puts down the sniper at Stern, less than five seconds into the weapon spawn timer. So let's see what they do in this next round, especially with the hills being flopped from being closer to that Stern. Now they're on the opposite side, closer to where that first half neutral hill was. So that sniper becomes even deadlier if you're trying to stand in that hill and get a triple cap. So much more important now where that long shot's gonna be placed, right by the Stern, on board with Hezzy. As he pushes forward, Vision's gonna get that first blood on Mortifies, and Pride Stark have been winning these initials. But it's all about that follow-up, right? How's this gonna work out in your favor? I like this as well, just backing away. I mean, he, he should have backed away a little bit sooner. And they lose out on that territory, giving it all up to Pride Stark. And this is not looking good for Mazer Gaming. It is gonna be up to Xenon by himself. They have E, they have their home. They just need to hold it off. He needs to hold it off to allow his teammates to get back into the fray. And you see them all now, the troops are coming in. They're gonna have to push in though because the break's coming through and here comes the possible triple cap. He's gonna get down from that crossfire coming through from Pride Star Chidwick on the front oh. side of the hill. Exclusive misses a big shot right there and he's gonna have to rotate around. Exclusive is gonna have to play some defense. He pulls his pistol out, he gets a great down right there. So now Dragons turns his head, he's gonna come back but he, make, he thinks better of it. He sees the two members of Mazer and he knows he's gonna have to get pushed out of that hill. So now Mazer, great chance for a retake right here. They get two off of that initial repush and they're gonna have to go ahead and fly at E Hill. They gotta take this advantage and try to fly into TJ, Vision, Warrior. Need to be centered. careful about Vision, though. Need to be careful. He has that long shot, and if they're pushing up and they're not careful, he's, they're going to be walking away without a head. Look at him go for the triple cap. They're going for a Mr. Krabs play. They're trying to make him. They're trying to make him panic. This is some risky business. Hezzy goes up against TJ. TJ's going to back up. You got two other guys here from Mazer as Hezzy joins them up top. TJ coming from the winch. This should be an easy grab, or at least an easy kill if he challenged that one, which is why TJ goes away. He did not have that right-hand advantage. But look at the look at the response coming in. They see TJ, they get the down on him. Does anybody rotate over from Pride Stark to try to get the pick? It looks like one member will come over. That is Dragon, but he will not get there in time. TJ will get picked up. Good smoke out by Mazer Gaming so that they stop him from being able to get the revive. They get the stun instead. They get the cleanup. Dragon down now. Morty gets to pick him off. Xenon picking off Chidwick. So again, here we go. Off to the races. The point spread is close enough where Mazer just has to get these two hills and apply a little bit of pressure, and they can take the easy point lead in this round and then set up and keep them down. And now that Hezzy has a long shot on Stern, you have to wonder, for Pride Stark, what is their approach going to be? They're going to have to watch their heads, and they need to push on Stern. they got to put this pressure onto Hezzy. They can't allow him to have any kind of freedom with this weapon, or else it will be doom for them. That's a big body shot on nice. Vision. Sometimes you just got to take that shot. You, you know it's going to do too. like almost 60 to 70% damage. You're going to easily get that down on him if you get another shot out. He hits TJ again with a big body shot. They have the point lead, but the E-Hill will get decapped. Another down. Downs TJ. He's using the long shot effectively without having to get headshots. He's keeping these members on their toes. He's keeping them possibly down. Might go for the down and not out. But they get separated. Him and Mortifies get separated at E, and they get taken out. So now Xenon has to make a push here in a 1v1 against Warrior, Aww. trying to break their hill. But Warrior says, not today, young gentleman. Does not work out. Sneak. Can he be the hero that they need? That's going to be one. Looking for a second, but Vision cuts him down to size. And the point spread is just too good. And here comes the trash talk, man. You love to see it, baby. You love to see it. I turn around, I see one member of Pride Stark standing up talking trash. The coach is giving everybody else some dap. He's saying, good job, boys. We're working it the way that we want to. Everybody over on Mazer sitting down, a little bit quiet. I don't see much emotion out of them. Again, he stands up, ladies and gentlemen. He's letting them know we're here. We're a threat to be dealt with. I love to see that energy. I love to see the way a player comes out and says it's all on the line right now. I don't care if I lose this match, but I'm going to give you all I got, and I'm going to make sure you know I am here to stay. I am a threat. 
The choice now for Mazer is to go for the support weapons. Dropping the hammer boot, hammer, hammer boost. Hammer boost. Hammer boost. The hammer <laughs> burst on cargo and pipes. A good support weapon to have here. It's going to really help out dealing with that fight on the long shot. Let's see how this plays out now. We got Hezzy with 22 kills. We're going to have to keep an eye on him. And this has been such an, an excellent game here. These two teams a lot closer than I had initially thought. But when you look at Mazer's track record, all their matches have been insanely close, Colin. Yeah, they're not dominating anybody. They're having to come out of it by the skin of their teeth. Fine as frogs here. They're really having to make something happen out of nothing. You see Visions running through that smoke. He looks like he was going to try to get a sneaky kill there, but it doesn't come through because Explosive and Hezzy shut that down. Now Sneak, TJ on the winch. TJ gets down by a good sniper shot, I believe. Exclusive cleans him up. So they have three down off the initial. You got to push your advantage. If you're Mazer, you can't let them keep getting members off respawn, but they try to push Chidwick, and that's a big defensive kill by Chidwick. Oh, and he rushes the Chidwick. second and gets the second for his efforts, baby. Chidwick with the plays there, man. He's got the shades on, too. He's feeling nice and classy now, Colin. I'm liking what I'm seeing. Keeping this one going, keeping the drive alive for Pride Star. TJ, after the drop on to Hezzy, that's going to leave two players up top by the stern. He's going to go down, though, courtesy of Xenon. Xenon working with his teammate. Can Dragon get that 1v2? But I just don't know. No, it's not going to happen. Mortifies gets the cleanup with the Nasher. Chidwick, is he going to do it again? Because his Nasher no. has been nasty, no. but it's not going to work out this time. Sneak had his number. Want to know the difference right there? The first time, they pushed Chidwick one at a time. They took him in three separate 1v1s. This time, True. all three collapsed on him at gotta once. Put the pressure. you got a wolf pack, ladies and gentlemen. The game tag of this game all two years has been never fight alone. I don't know why people keep thinking it's the right idea. It's not. Get your friends. Get some help. Yeah, you're going to need that assistance. Gears of War, in a, in a blink of an eye, it could just change. You think that you, you're going to be winning in this uh, 2v2, and then before you know it, you're, you're done. You, the, the fight's complete. It's over. You have nothing else. You gain no value out of this. But now, though, we got Dragon. He sees Xenon, but I think the wiser play here, and he's making it, is just to go with his teammates by the stern. Let that guy hang out by the winch by himself, right? He's not providing any kind of value to his teammates, but they got to stay alive. Sneak trying to bounce up into Dragon's face, but Dragon playing that very intelligent. He rolls back closer to his teammates. He knows he's got some help behind him. So now they're going to be trying to catch up. It's only a 30-point difference at this point. Warrior defending his home hill with Visions. Visions getting a big double kill right there with Warrior. That's great teamwork. They fended that off. They can easily get, catch up in points at this point in the round. But if they get a break on D, it makes it that much easier. Mortifies, Mortifies. gets two. Mortifies needs this third. He needs to create a big defensive third. stand. Does he get a fourth? He's he just rolls right there, but both of them do, so it resets. He You're going to reset alive. your health. Reset your health. He stays alive long enough, and now he's going to have that help there from his from his teammates. Exclusive, Xenon, they're all going to be able to push in. Mortifies now can just push forward. He doesn't have to worry about that. So he's going to go over to F side, the home hill for the cog, for Pride Stark, and just try and decap that and slow the momentum for them, because as of right now, if they keep going like this, they will win this game. But Vision is actually going to be exclusive, who nails the triple kill, the domination as well. And Mazer Gaming answers back. Pride Stark, they were, they were a little too ambitious. Unfortunately, bit them in the butt. Great coordinated push because Mazer actually sent Hesitate up, to, or Hezzy, excuse me, up to that top stern area. They know that the respawn sniper's there anyway. It's going to be for free. He gets a break there on E because all of the members of Pride Stark were collapsing at those last few moments. They break E. They're also pushing F. They get the breaks everywhere they needed. They end up getting a triple cap out of it. That's a late round collapse. You got late game, as I like to call it, because they make the correct calls to overextend and then clear out their home and then make all the right breaks and all the right caps. Mortifies has been a madman. 26 kills for him. And when you think that this team's going to be out of it, you see Mortifies pop up in the kill feed with two kills of his own. He seems to be getting doubles back to back like it's nobody's business. And now the fight begins. You'd have thought his name was Donkey Kong with the way he's been getting all these DKs, am I right? He's been bopping them, i tell you that much, man. But now you got Hezzy on your screen, and he, unfortunately, not going to stay alive long enough. He picked up that long shot, paid for it. Mortifies, though. I mentioned it before. He's always going to pop up in that kill feed there. This time around, though, didn't really work out in his favor. Chidwick, who had a great, great round that last time, staying alive and taking those 1v1s. And he only has to deal with this one player here. Because of that meat shield, and the support from his teammate. That's going to open up the stern for them. Now they gain control of E. And I believe there was going to be a long shot lingering around there, or it may have just gone away because no one picked it up in time. 
He, regardless, yeah. so that was disappeared uh, off the map. Been wiped. Big, big win there for them. Winning that initial, getting D and E, and now they're going to start to rack up these points. Colin. So Xenon is playing this home hill position. What his job is right now? Find out where the members of Pride Stark are. They got to know where their advantage is, and they got to know where they can take their smokes off of this respawn and push together as a team. When Mazer's winning fights, they're winning most of them by being together. They're holding hands. They're making sure that nobody's too far away not to get a revive. Oh. And there it goes. Look at that. Vision tries to push up on the down member of. Mazer, he gets chunked for his troubles by Xenon, and now they can continue to push forward. They know they have a 5v4 advantage. Use numbers to keep numbers. I like taking two players over the winch, too. Just scouting around it, supporting one another. Oh, man, but he ends up dying there, so that is very unfortunate. Mortifies, doesn't stay alive to help his team member out. And now we got Hezzy. He's going to have that hammer burst by E. He has it actually TJ going to be right in front of him. Did not expect that player at all. It's going to roll on out of there, Colin. And now you kind of got this really weird spot for Mazer. They're kind of getting caught in the cross a lot. They're getting caught out in really bad positions, almost like in no man's land. You can't go back. You can't go forward. There's somebody always waiting for you. As he rotates up to try to help a teammate, he's going to get shotgun down as he bounces around. And now another member is going to get taken out. That's Sneak. And TJ gets the respawn sniper. So that is almost worst case scenario if you are Mazer Gaming, because then you send Mortifies in by himself, and he's going to try to make a big play. And that doesn't come through. Poor Xenon got left alone to wait for respawns yet again. Oh, and the shot from TJ downtown. Looking for another one, but he doesn't get it. That's the miss. It don't matter, though. That's going to be, uh, ooh, they do deny it for the time being. Actually, they restabilize with one second remaining on the clock. Sneak pushes in, kills Warrior, mortifies, kills Chidwick. Dragon's going to be all by his lonesome, but no points being gained now. Pride Stark, they're crossing that 180-point threshold. It's getting so close to the point of no return. You hear the horns. They got to make a play. They got to do something right now. If Ward you are Mazer the Gaming. That's the, that's the break you need. You get the first one, you get the second one. Here comes the members off respawns. E Hill is being decapped in their favor. This could be another late game choke. Warrior rolls in. He gets down by some crossfire. Morty's going to be able to pick him up. Now it's up to Chidwick, but Chidwick's in a 1v2. He gets taken out. I can't a believe it. Round in a row where they choke it away in the last few waning moments. Gold Boy, what are we watching right now? You got to check the side of the stage, Colin, because I we, we I don't know if maybe someone just just fluck uh, some some food. They flick some food in their throat because I think they're choking. I don't know. It's just not really good. Maybe they maybe they were eating some chips mid round and then you know it's, <laughs> you don't want to see that, that grease, Colin. that salt and vinegar get stuck down no, there. No, sir, you, you do not want that. Lyrics. Somebody get the Heimlich quick. Call the medic. This is where I got to call on their coach, Cubano. I mean, this guy, he's been in the scene for such a long time. He's got to keep them focused. He's got to keep them going because right now they're all trying to talk trash. And I think the time for trash talk is done. You got to focus on the task at hand. You got to win this game because it's match point in favor of Mazer. 6-4, Mazer Gaming. They're one round away from taking a 1-0 map count and going into map two with all the pride, all the glory, because they've made Pride Stark choke two rounds back to back, and that's the icebreaker you need from Sneak. Big shots out by him on that winch. Good headshot with the Nash. Now he's able to take position. They're gonna get the sniper into the hands of the man, exclusive. He is gonna come over here, run a little overwatch. Mm -hmm. He sees the flank, get it called out from mid. He's gonna get a body shot there on Warrior, I believe. Oh, that was Chidwick he got it on. Excuse and that me. last round, Colin, is so demoralizing for Pride Stark to lose the way that they did, be on the brink of victory, literally one second. But Mazer Gaming, Manage to restabilize and get back on that point, and then to be able to re, you know, answer the ta answer the call the way that they did, kind of like just clap back like that. I love to see that, and this is where Pride Stark. This is where we see what this team is made out of. I can't believe none of those hit there, but sneak. Regardless, yeah, there you go. Just clean up the players that are going to be down. Help by your teammate. Try and stay alive by winch. You need you need this position. Three dead. That's four v two. 4v1 because Visions is also down. Somebody's got to get to Visions. Last player is going to be by F, and you see him. That's Visions. He's Actually, that's going to be Warrior. Use the number. Use the number on Warrior. Use the numbers on Warrior. You've got four alive. You don't need the fifth. Warrior's down. Warrior's down. TJ's coming off respawn. That could spell the end of map number one, Golden Boy. Nobody's got enough time to get there. That will be done. Oh. And Dustin, the chainsaw for added effect, ladies and gentlemen. Cutting him in half, sawing him down. Wow. Rough goings there for Pride Stark. And <laughs> those last two rounds, I mean, the back-to-backs, the -back insane.
Yes, A though, it's a solid showing from Pride Stark. I don't think many of us expected them to be able to put out and fight in the way that they did against Mazer Gaming, a squad that we've given a lot of respect to. What are your thoughts there, Ryan? Yeah, I mean, to me, they, they showed, they, they could actually even, I will not say win that map, but that map could have been even closer than it already was. But to me, the story of that map was the top side of the map. Mazer Gaming owned the top side of the map. You know, in Harbor, we have kind of two living worlds, right? We have the top side of the map with the Stern and the Winch. We have the bottom side of the map where the Home Hills are. To me, Mazer Gaming won the top side, whether it's on the initial or on retail they were able to have control of that map, and that part of the map is so influential with the lines of sights you get from Winch, and obviously the hill being up on Stern in the second half. Yep. You know, Ryan, before we got into that matchup, I actually said to Golden Boy in the back, I said, hey, I think we're going to see Harbor get snuck through here, because Mazer plays that map they on like a weekly Harbor. basis. Yep. They love it to death, and sometimes you forget your map picks and bans. You don't do exactly the homework you need to do, and you let a map slip through that you shouldn't, and Mazer Gaming proved why they love Harbor. They're able to make those late game decisions, those late game rotations. They get two rounds to be choked away by Pride Stark, that's a gut punch. Yeah, that was rough, very rough. Yeah. Now, I want to water that plant a little bit more there, Ryan, is I, I think you're talking about something that's really important in Harbor. I think we don't emphasize enough. Talk about the importance of, re of gaining high side control, maintaining high side control, and how do you do it? Yeah, so for them, I mean, it starts with the initial, right? A lot of times the, the, the winch fight usually has one or two players up there, depending on the strategy you run, also depending on what weapon's up there. When there's a weapon up there, obviously you get a lot more focus to that stern side. But that winch is so, so important because that has the lines of sights down to the B hill on the first half, and it has lines of sights down to the home hills on the second half. It is so important. You saw Mazer Gaming, even when they would lose the initial, they would instantly make sure they put their numbers onto a retake to make sure that they take the top side of the map. And that's honestly the reason they were able to edge out Pride Star, because Pride Star played yeah. a pretty good map in my eyes. They kind of own the bottom side. Yeah, I, don't, I really don't think, like, that game came down to, like, the nuanced details and and uh, it really, I think it also came down to the the choking of those two rounds. I mean, that that one what was that uh the, what was that round? I want to say ten or something it like that. It was round nine because it made nine. it six four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That round, man, one second, and they would have won it. And think about like how much that would have like influenced them moving forward. You're able to puff your chest out. You exactly, win that round. which is which was what was going on. We were getting the live shots of those players. They were arguing. They were yelling at each other. That's a pride thing. When Mazer was losing the rounds. You kind of saw them turn and cower and just look at each other. Same thing with Pride Stark. It's like, you know, you, you want to, like you said, you want to be able to puff your chest there uh, and to lose like that, I mean, that was rough. Rough rounds. Yeah, I mean, both teams in my eyes are a little bit guilty of getting counter wiped way too often, right? So yeah. sometimes teams would get a little bit excited with their numbers, push a little bit unorganized, and then get counter wiped most of the time on the opposite team's home hill in an attempt for a triple cap. When you're pushing those numbers ahead and you oh, have that man. advantage, you have to make sure your push is organized, otherwise you'll get picked off, and next thing you know, you're losing numbers. That play by Hezzy with the uh, with the snipe, oh my word, that was just, that was a thing of beauty, man. Just getting the, the quick scope like that in. And even this oh, one too for Mortify. Mortify, he had a great game. A lot of moments where you, like I mentioned, you'd see him pop up in the kill feed two times for a double or, you know, he, he'd get that critical kill like you saw earlier on. I just think, like, he was a huge contributing factor for this team. They did very well. And, Gold, I want to ask you, you mentioned earlier a few choke rounds. Walk me through those choke rounds. What was happening? What wasn't working so well? And maybe what can this Pride Star team do differently? I mean, I don't know if there's – when you talk about, like, chokes, uh, so to speak, right, they're, they're – you, you, anyone can go and look at something, and I think this is kind of like a common issue in a lot of esports where players are like, if something had just gone my way, right? But you always need to kind of remove that garbage out of the equation because. You're a thumb guy, not a finger guy. Yeah, right? Like, you, you gotta be like, no, no, no. Something something didn't go your way. Like, you can't, you can't count on that. And I think that the reason why this team struggled so much was because when they had that advantage, they just weren't really playing around their advantages that well. Even right here where they're pushing in their home and they're trying to like zone out, you know, the enemy team. I mean, Mazer just found a way to always creep back in. You can't allow them to do that, period. And Mazer, the big difference to me is every time Mazer tried to push an advantage, they kept taking 1Vs. You saw it three times on Chidwick in a single round. They pushed 1Vs. Late games, those chokes that happened came out from Pride Stark. It's because Mazer said, let's get two or three of us together. Let's go as a brotherhood. Let's get the kills together or we die yes. together. We're going to rely on one another. We're either going to look great doing it, or it's going to fall to pieces. And they look great making it happen. And that last round is a... a, a Honestly, a fundamental thing you do not want to do when you're playing kind of, we call it defense on the end of a round. When you have two hills, you know that the team has to do what we call a split push. And for our viewers at home, a split push means that you're taking your numbers and you're putting them to two different hills at the same time. So at that very end, they had the neutral hill up at E and they had their home hill. What Pryasar did was they split their resources the same way. So now you're taking two even fights. 
What you want to do in that situation when you have such an advantage is to make sure you lock your numbers down to one hill. All you need is one to win that late in the game. And you saw they're able to break both hills at once, take both of those fights, come out on top yeah. of the end of the map. First. That should not be allowed to happen. You should not allow them to be able to remove both hills at the same. I mean, I, I can go. We can go on. Group and on your about resources, it. right? I, I, Five lancers. The lancers are really beat, strong on you land. You can only beat a dead horse, but so much. Am I right? You yeah. Can't, I mean, that, just that, whacking that, it that on horse is, is rotten at this point. Yeah. Well, we're <laughs> hearing some great insight from each of you. It sounds like not necessarily doing the best job taking their advantage. It says Golden Boy, of course. Colin mentioning a lot of the mishaps as well. Ryan speaking to the split pushes. Great analysis here. And doesn't it get fun when you get later on in Saturday and you can actually start to break things down? I can't, and then I can't wait for the. Oh man, we got the good ones coming up too. This is. A, this is. <laughs> oh yeah. We're, we have some good gears of war ahead. Yeah. Good gears of war. And of course, some of the best analysts and casters we have in Gears. It's been a pleasure joining alongside you guys and hosting all weekend long. And what a game one it was, neck and neck, until really Mazer was able to run away with that, winning two or three straight rounds to close that one out. But map number two is coming. It'll be up and ready in just a moment. But of course, taking a look at some of these player cards as well and breaking down the rosters of these teams. This, this, uh, Pride Stark Squad is a team of players you maybe haven't heard of if you've been following competitive Gears of War for a long time. Five players from five different nations. Goldboy, yeah. you've had a chance and the pleasure to cast in Desk Coast some Counter-Strike Go. That's something you see in Counter-Strike often. That's yeah. something you see in Gears as much. It's like the yeah. phase team. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yep. Uh, you know, you, you do see the lot of, in a lot of, in a lot of other esports. My name is Ross Wade. Time, I'm from Ireland. I'm, I'm on Pride Stark Gaming. My gamer tag is Warrior Guns. Well, I think our team plays a lot like American teams, to be honest with you. We, we, we get one kill and we play aggressive. We don't sit back. A lot of European teams play for a setup. We play aggressive. We get one kill, we push for a second kill. We're always looking for a third kill even. Because if you don't have energy and gears, you're more or less done. The other team will just feed off of that, feed off of your, your dead vibes, and they'll punish you for it. It's important to stay positive and to, to try kill their vibes before they kill yours. There you have it, Pride Stark. You heard it. You heard Ar it. I feel like the Irishman himself <laughs> there on str on uh, screen. Of course, you also have Vision from Germany. You have a member from Scotland, and then of course Dragons coming from Spain. Yeah. Multinational team. Golmo, you were about to break it down. For yeah. Me. Well, what I was going to say <laughs> was that <laughs> you know it, it's something that you didn't see a lot back in the day. Uh, oftentimes, it was a lot of like just national pride in a lot of games, and it's. Americans teaming with Americans and Canadians teaming with Canadians and blah 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 you know whether different parts of Europe or Latin America and I think now everyone just has one single desire there's so much money on the line nowadays it's all about just winning it doesn't matter how you do it doesn't matter who you do it with if the team is good if you work together if you got the chemistry group up play your game win some championships and that's what we're seeing across a variety of different games, not just Gears of War. I just like that Gears of War is one of those games that Europe, Latin America, North America, everyone's pretty even, I would say, which has been pretty awesome to see. Yep, well, there you see the player roster card that I thought we were going to earlier, but here it is now. You see on your screen right there, Chidwick at the top left, I believe he is one from Scotland. You see Vision on your screen as well. Vision plays from Germany, Dragons at the top right, and a, a really a, a roster of individuals we haven't had a chance to watch a whole bunch of at the top level, so it's good to see these names as the third best team in Europe. They're getting flown out by the coalition and given an opportunity to make a name for themselves, and man, now is the time. You gotta beat this major squad to try and force that three-way tie or even a four-way tie yeah. in this racket. They did it the most Gears of War style possible, coming through the open bracket. You can only make your name if you make it through open. You get to pools, it's time to solidify you. Yep, that's for sure. Like Colin said, now or never, can Mazer Gaming hold on and secure themselves a guaranteed second place spot and ticket to the winner's bracket of the championship finals? Or will it be Pride Stark who's able to turn the tide and give Space Station a living, breathing chance for a winner's bracket run? Map number two on foundation underway right now. All right, well, do or die now for Pride Stark, foundation. I, I enjoy this map a lot, Colin, because you really get some fun splits, and then everything kind of just merges up. If you get, if you get, oh, and if you get like statue, or you can get like some fun statue plays, you can also get some fun mid plays as well. Uh, but the early game is always a uh, is always a good one, and uh, you know, and Ryan over there checking his uh, checking He's checking checking Twitter, baby. It's you okay, gotta man. see what his mentions are. We you gotta, you gotta make sure you stay up on we who's talking about you or not. Uh, who's talking about you, Ryan? 
You know, I got so many fans at this point. I'm just trying to sift through just the last 20 it. minutes of notifications. Oh, yeah, he says right? that, but true story, it. literally like about it. an hour ago, someone went to ask him for his autograph, and he literally was like shifty eyes because he was like, wait, you're talking to me type of thing? I was next to Jordan. You know, Jordan Ribs got a lot of fans in the house, as you guys know, right? Play with identities. You know, he got a lot of, it's hard not to like Jordan Ribs, right? It's Jordan Ribs. So <laughs> when I see someone come over with the book, I'm like, you're talking to Jordan, right? Like, not, like, oh, no, me? Okay, yeah, I won here once. So, yeah. Hey, so hey Ryan, fans, just remember Ryan. who was your fan first, all right? Yeah, this man on the far, my far left, actually, what is, is and will always be the number one fan of all the teams I ever coached. Can we real quick and tell that story? This man, Colin, yes. also has T-Virus. Oh my God, yes, Literally, please. back two years ago, we did a Microsoft Store tournament every single uh, Saturday, once a month. There'd be a Microsoft Store tournament. We decided to make a special one with Team Envy as partner with Envy. We had all members of Envy go to North Carolina to play in the Charlotte Store. Were you there in attendance? I, I couldn't make it. I, I okay. went to every boot camp but that one, okay. unfortunately. Okay. So that one. The but stars weren't aligned. We had fans pair up and play with the pros. It was Team Franchise, Team Solars, Team Toy Soldier. This man, Colin, drove two and a half hours. Six hours. Six hours. Richmond, Virginia to Charlotte, yeah. North Carolina, baby. Get it that's right, a, dude. That's a <laughs> six hour drive for a man like me from where I come from in the backwoods of Virginia. But you get down there early in the morning, you sign up, and then all you do is wait, and you see those legends walk in. You see guys wearing the Envious jersey. You know you love to watch them play on Sundays because you know they're competing for championships. I prayed to the good Lord above. I said, let me play with praise and franchise to him. My favorite at the time. And the good Lord blessed me. I got to sit next to them. I like how, I like how as he talks, it got worse. Yeah, it the got more, more southern. It's like, it's like it's we go down to Virginia. It's it's Virginia it's it Where, where's the dog? The dog's out of food with it somewhere. Sometimes, sometimes I start out and it's just, it's fine. I can hide it. I can hide it behind all this. And other times, it just Hey, man, just everyone out. always so gets excited. my for saying coffee. So, you know, I mean, I can't seem to get out of the New York accent. Or Boricum contingent. Yeah, you know, the Boricua contingent, that's right, that's me and my boy Monster. Such a Monster D-Face out there if he's watching. <laughs> but yeah, this man, Colin, the reason, moral of the story is, if you're out there moral watching, the if you're a fan of a lot of these players, a lot of these teams, come out, show up on land, meet these people, shake their hand, and what was it, about a year and a half later, this man, Colin, applied to be part of the talent team as part of, and submitted a reel, and now he's on the main stage casting alongside us. You also used to come to Hyper Station events and not say a word to anybody. Uh, he told my, us. My he's been job, like, oh, my job was to be a spectator. A spectator. I just walked by and I would nod people. I was like, why don't you, you say I hi to us? I almost, like, please. Don't him. I almost don't believe him. Did you actually John, come? I, actually, in Philadelphia, I've, I met Barbosa a couple times. <laughs> my favorite thing in the world is I looked at it as this. I was going to tournaments where y'all are playing a game for money. Yeah. It's your job. It's not my job to interject in your daily life when you're trying so to work. It wasn't our job at hype. So yeah, it was not our job. No, it was not our job. That's how I looked at it. Y'all are <laughs> <Especially> playing. <me>. <laughs> <laughs> This guy would just show Ryan. When you, when, Ryan. Let me ask, I when you yours. saw Barbosa walk around, <laughs> did he look like he was about to have a heart attack? 99% uh, of the time. The other 1% <laughs> yeah, was after the, day, after the whole thing was over. He, he looked like he wasn't going to have a heart attack. And then, and then Murray's around here as he well. Is, Murray's, Murray's here. around here with Fire and Ice. And, you know, I haven't had a chance to say hi to him yet, but, you know, I will never forget my greatest story of Murray. Did a tournament with him. It was just me and him. I was a caster. He was a producer. We were there 14 hours, three days straight. So three days, 14 hours, okay, each day. And Murray is well, unpaid. Murray, yeah, of course. And then Murray <laughs> course. fell asleep at the switch. When Murray <laughs> fell asleep, I fell asleep too. <laughs> <laughs> Casting, commentating oh, games, no. man. Residency. You, you know, we all agree. You? Michael Murray is a national treasure, and Do we must protect him at the first all costs. National treasure. Where we've come <laughs> we must... from the beginning, the early days, days and the early oh stages God. of esports, where we did it purely out of passion, love for games, and love for the opportunity to tell that story. Little did we know we'd have such an opportunity here. But speaking of opportunity, opportunity of a lifetime right now for Pride Stark to shut down this major gaming squad and try to get that three-way tie secured. Let's see if they can do it. It looks like map number two, Foundation, is ready to go. Golden Boy. Colin. Take it away. Take it away. Take it away. All right. Well, I'm going to pick up my pen. Take it away, not give it away. The big shout out to the Red the Hot Chili Peppers. But look, we already got the <laughs> action started. That one We're in coming there. in here a little bit late, ladies and gentlemen. So let's set this up for you. Pride Star come out. They got the early hill lead, but immediately Mazer starts to answer. They see Visions up there in the pocket. But here comes a good rotation by Warriors. Exclusive tries to go for a little revive change. So this could be some problems, especially because Warrior gets that double kill. Sneak calls him out. So let's settle things down. We're only at 50 points in the first round, so we're going to see a lot more action. But Sneak is going to get aggressive by C. Domination in progress now. So Warrior had to make a play, had to get inside of this. and. That is going to prompt Sneak to have to get back. Do you have teammates, though, off of the respawn for Sneak? So the good news for them was that they were able to hold them off for the time being. And now, though, this has kind of just been a little staggered for Pride Stark. Mazer has been doing a fantastic job of really just exploiting them, you know, from out of cover constantly. Got to say, I mean, I like the way that Mazer are using their, their snubs, using their lancers here, Colin. 
and they're doing a great job of it. They're gonna roll, make sneak roll back. So they're gonna, they know they gotta play a little bit of defense here first. You gotta get your members off spawn so that you can reset, throw your smokes and make a coordinated push. Three members of Pride Star coming down that ramp together. Lance of Fire from Hezzy and Mortify trying to slow them up, but they're not showing any fear. Warrior now. Wait a minute. Are we missing a round? Because I thought I just saw a weapon that shouldn't be on the map. Yeah, You're Warrior has a hammer burst in his hands. Oh, so look at that. Well, we'll get a we'll get a beat on that one a little bit. Don't worry about it there, Colin. I got you. I guess I don't know what that has to do with me. I, I'm actually kind of curious. I can't wait to see the end of this round because if he spawned in with the wrong weapon, I think that's a I think that's a penalty. Oh. I, I think that's a lot deeper than it goes just because if they if we haven't had a weapon placement, that could be bad news. Could be. Well. We'll keep eyes on that one. I think, yeah, I see uh, Hezzy there. He had, uh, well, we'll, 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 we'll keep eyes on that one. Okay, so it did get picked up, we were just told. Okay, so be sure to keep, uh, you know, keep a beat on that one for the time being. Anyway, though, back into the action we go. 190 and now Mazer. They're in a really good spot here. No points being gained for Pride Stark. It's gonna be all Mazer all the time and Dragon and company need to make a play happen, but it's not because they only have a couple points, a couple seconds remaining, and that is essentially going to be GG for this round. It will go to Mazer, and it is 2-0. So, Colin, you don't got to worry. I, oh, you don't got to worry, Colin. We missed a whole dang round. We, we reminisced too much up here. You know that, we right? Really we were bro. telling too many stories. We missed the whole first round, baby. We're very happy. We're but very it's all right. We're going to catch up here. We're going to get you back on track. Hammer burst down at the fountain, fountains and welding. They're probably going to put something down here in the middle because that is the number one fight people like to go for. They're going to put a snipe down there. So instead of fighting over the B hill and the sniper, they're going to put in that open area. You're going to see a bunch of traffic down there, down the ramp. Smoke should come out to the left and to the right. But my big story so far through these first two rounds, TJ and Chidwick, only one kill. You got to step your game up if you don't want to get 2 0 There are going to be two players that we need to focus on in this round. And I know that if, if, if you are Mazer, you, you're very happy seeing that on the, on the scoreboard there. And you're seeing Dragon, you're seeing Chidwick, you're seeing these names just continue to struggle against you. You know that you are making them frustrated. And given how, the first game went for Pride Stark. I would not be surprised if Mazer rolls on through with this one because of just the way that Pride Stark lost game one, Colin. It is difficult to dig yourself out of that mental hole once you're inside of it. And it's almost like they needed to go back to a locker room and talk it out because here we go. It could be 3-0 before you know it. Warrior gets body shot down. There's two of them crawling around. Mortifies cleans up the second. Now Mortifies possibly in a 2v1 because these two members of Pride Stark are going to have to try to get these kills to keep the triple cap from coming uh. through. Mortifies is still fighting them off. He's going to roll out. He knows he has a sniper rifle. Use it to your advantage, my man. Use the long shot. Get the body shots. Go for maybe a headshot here or there. Don't don't sacrifice the power weapon. Behezi just picked up a double kill. Now he got two guys from Pride Star pushing up. The meat shield's gonna be used and everyone's just dying. Warrior team kills Chidwick after, I mean, before Warrior died and that is gonna be the third round and they're just letting him know. I mean, again, I, I gotta talk about it. How do you dig yourself out of that mental hole, man? I mean, it is very tough for this team who has kind of been getting shellacked all day to have to do it again? I don't know, Colin. I, I got a little inside information. You saw Mortifies get loose in the first game and now he's already putting on a show in the second game. I asked him yesterday, one of Morty's nicknames throughout the community is Do-Rag Morty because he used to always have a Do-Rag on. I asked him, is Do-Rag Morty here and ready to go? He said, Do-Rag Morty is here and ready to go. So I think he might be putting on a show for all his fans in the community, baby. Hey, and I'm okay with that because he has been unbelievable to watch. Also, I want to give a credit to Sneak, who, while he may not be popping up in the in the scoreboard quite a bit, he's still doing very well. He's been that vocal leader for this team. When they need the trash talk, he's getting up, he's yelling at them on the other side. And oof, man, that, that could have been that could have been Harry. I, I was looking at you for a brief moment there. What happened, Colin? Exclusive had almost a free kill. He ran up on a man with a lancer. He wasn't even looking at him, and he somehow let him get away. And then he gets himself trapped in a corner. But here comes the Mr. Krabs. Nobody for Pride Stark was in a position to make any kind of plays. So you will finally get them to spread out and try to get back to the two home hills in this first half to stop the triple cap from coming through. But they got lost in the sauce in the middle of the round. They were too busy trying to make fights happen and not get the hills. It's still an objective game. Another Another team kill for Pride Stark. TJ ends up 
uh, hitting the incendiary nade on his own teammate Dragon. That is very, very rough because that will be another time that that has happened to them. Hezzy's going to be so low on health, but with four seconds remaining, they got to get onto this B Hill, which they should be able to do with relative ease. You have Sneak with the Hammer Burst. That does a lot of damage, but he's by himself. So he needs to drop out of this, recognize that this is not a fight that he needs to win. He just needs to stay alive. And he Vision challenges, but Sneak had his number. Well done from Sneak. And I had just talked about the vocal leadership he provides, but he hasn't had, you know, the, like, insane game that he's been playing consistent. And I think if you're Mazer, you're happy with that, Colin. Sometimes you just got to be even keel. You just got to do your job. Take care of what is your responsibility. And it allows everybody else on your team to just flourish. And that's what Sneaky's been doing these first two maps. You see the overhead map. Look at the way that they're spread. Three down in the cave, two here in the mid map, looking over that top ramp. Because everybody knows that sniper is going to be coming up very shortly. So. Pride Stark is getting the positioning correct to pick up the respawn long shot, but Hezzy's in there first and gets a quick pick on it. That is a blunder. That is a huge blunder by Pride Stark, if you ask me, because nobody was even close to it. Was it a blunder, or were they just not keeping track of it effectively? That is something you need to keep in mind, right? That could be the possibility, and Hezzy already gets a headshot on Warrior. So that's why it's a blunder, because it goes from just missing out on a respawn sniper fair, fair, fair. to giving Hezzy an easy headshot. And now Dragon is trapped like a rat oh. behind an instant. But then a um, big flank by Vision. Huge flank. Can Vision get the second? Can Vision get the second? No, he, 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 yes, will. he does. He, he does will. get the second. Right at the nick of time, he's able to get the second, and that is going to give them C. Xenon's going to be right in front of him. And Xenon now is going to go in for this fight against Vision. And he big rolls right into roll. it. I this roll. Yeah, I really thought he was going to punish him for that roll there. Did not happen. Sometimes you just move it too fast. You don't slow it down. You don't see the miss roll. You don't get the easy kill. But Vision still fighting off two members of. Oh my goodness. Vision wins again. And he's letting him know, Colin. He's letting him know. But Exclusive shuts him down before he gets a little too gully there. And that's going to be two members down for the red team. Trade. And we're right Big back trade. at it now. We have one player left alive. It's going to be Sneak. Last person standing for Mazer Gaming as his teammates come off spawn. He's going to have to win a fight down here. He's full red. Look at him blind fire over the cover. He's got a hand poking out though, so if you took a shot with that snub, you might be able to catch him once or twice, but he knows that he's got some friends coming. Xena down here now, pushing the advantage, trying to get a shot here on Warrior. He will get it down. Big mantle kick kill for Xenon. They clean up a second and a third on the map. So three members dead for Pride Stark. This is a dangerous territory for them because they have the point lead. Don't let this happen. Don't choke it away again. Make map two a different story from map number one, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be the case. Mazer Gaming, they have just been all over Pride Stark like white on rice. Five seconds remaining. This was looking like a Pride Stark win. They need to make a play happen right now, but the body, oh my goodness, I cannot believe it. Sneak just shuts him down as he goes in for that last gas save, and that is going to ruin that round for Pride Stark. GG on it. Four straight for Mazer. Four straight for Mazer. That's a massive advantage for them. And now Pride Stark has got to put something down here at the Pistons. They're hovering over that boom shot. So you're going to see probably a 1v1 for that snipe, but you're going to see a massive team fight come out sooner or later for that boom shot. Everybody's going to be throwing their smokes. You're going to see more pressure in that Pistons area. The hill counts, but it's not as big as that rocket launcher, ladies and gentlemen. That's a lot almost of toys two on guarantee the map. kills. A lot of toys on the map. Colin. Oh, yeah. You got a sniper. You got some boom. You got some incense. You got some. Uh, you, you got the hammer burst. burst. There's a ton, ton of weapons to be able to pick up here. But the battle's going to be down low. You also have two members going up for that B side here, and immediately Dragon right, just up A's right into his face and just chunks him as soon as he pushes up. Dragon though is going to be in the fray. Mortifies picks up two. Finally, Mortifies is going to go down though, and it's going to be Chidwick and TJ who stay alive. But Sneak gets the boom shot. Does he get out of there though? Yes, he. No, no, he doesn't. He doesn't. And he's got the boom in his hand, so they're going to get one more rocket. They're going to kill him. They're going to pick up the boom shot when it falls, but they don't have enough members off spawn to be able to go for this triple cap just yet. They're going to probably have B and their home, and Chidwick got immediately pushed by Xena and uses that rocket to go ahead and wipe him off the map. So in round five, the spawns are a lot longer. You still have a three on five. You should go ahead and push this. You know that Sneak might be coming up in a second or two, but try to get one more kill. Try to keep them off staggered spawns because you can keep your advantages that way. TJ with the long shots, not getting any valuable angles. 
and the domination now. Pride Stark so close, one second, and no one's gonna be able to get there. Finally, Pride Stark managed to put a point on the board after getting waxed by Mazer Gaming four rounds straight. But Mazer, I think they're feeling okay about that because, hey, you know, if you're gonna lose this round, if, if, this, is, if this is the round you lose, it, it is it is what it is, right? They've been dominating them this whole time. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say it. Pride Stark living off a standing eight count right now. <laughs> if they get knocked down one more time, somebody might have to call it off. I like that play. Mazer takes off the boom shot and says, you know what? That one round you won, it's because of that boom shot. Yep. Let's take it off. Let's focus back up. Let's go into the half 5-1 and get as close as we can to finishing this off. They took it right back to their territory. Love that play. Here we go. Sniper is going to be the only thing in place. So you got three players going low. You also have the incendiary nades. Does anyone go in there for the sniper? Mortifies is going to be down, and now he will be out of here. Dragons was tagged up quite a bit, and then the follow-up comes from Xenon. And this is kind of just slow down here, Colin. Yeah, Xenon's bouncing around. He knew he had one more fight up there. He got rid of the meat shield a little early, though. But he's going to rotate over to try to give his friends some help. So they're going to get to take out Warrior. And now the last two members of Pride Stark are alive, but they're on opposite sides of the map. And Hezzy has the sniper oh! and gives Chidwick another haircut, takes him to the barber shop. Free of charge, ladies and gentlemen. Threading the needle there with the long shot. You love to see it. Domination was denied, but man, you have to think, if you're Pride Stark, you're very frustrated with this, and they have no idea. He has no idea that this, now he knows. Now Dragon knows that the snipe is gonna be over to his far side of the map, the far left by B side, but B and C for Mazer currently as it stands. Let's see how they're gonna play this one out now. You're gonna have exclusive go up against Vision. Vision gets into Tussle. He's also gonna have himself a teammate to help him out and exclusive so Scott. exclusive gets 2v1 on yeah. top street. Has he's got to make something happen here because Dragon's going to bounce around. If he can get a body shot or maybe even a headshot yep. there on Dragon, he can really help save this round because a couple of members of Mazer were wiped off quickly <laughs> and he misses. He hits the side of that, he hits the side of that concrete cylinder and he's going to have to turn around. But then Vision's up as him. So now Xenon caught between four members of Pride Stark and that is not the place you want to be, Morty. You just tried to run into 4v1. Sneak exclusive off respawn. They're going to be able to get to C Hill and decap it in time to prevent this round from getting out of hand just yet. The respawns of the incidents and the snipe just about to happen. And the break of the domination for the swarm for Pride Stark was stopped by exclusive. Sneak with the incendiary nades throwing them forward. And Vision gets that long shot now. And everyone knows this. They know that they need to be careful. They got to watch their heads. And it feels like this is certainly going to be a round for Pride Stark if it keeps going like this. Exclusive but it, they're got not picked off in the middle of the in the middle oh, of the map. He? Yeah, exclusive tried to sneak around. He tried to go for a little cheeky flank and got called out and taken down. So they're still getting staggered. Pride Stark is doing a good job this round of calling out all the one Bs that Mazer is trying to take, and they're falling back into that oh. trap that they did in map Ooh. number one. They keep taking one Bs. They keep trying to send one person to do it all, try to be a hero. You can't do it, ladies and gentlemen. If Wolfpack works, Wolfpack all day. Exclusive. Has one in front. That's TJ. Lights him up with some Lancer fire. But I think TJ is going to be able to get that health back before Exclusive can put any more damage down. 51% for him, and TJ still able to win that fight out, though. Now it's going to be Domination in five seconds. Is anyone there to stop it? It's going to be Xenon. And he gets in there, denies it right at the last moment. A little bit of a stutter step in there. I like that play. Kind of caught him off guard. Didn't really expect that. Can he get the meat shield, too? But he dies on that play. And that is going to have to force back. Pride Stark. Mortifies is going to have to go absolutely massive right here. One of them is going to have to get good. almost a 20 or 30. He's almost going to have to get a two or three piece because they're going to have to break both B and A to have any chance in hell to win this round right now. Golden Boy, and you see Pride Stark, they have turtled up around their home hill. Is Hezzy going to be that guy to do it? He's got exclusive there to help him out. And they managed to break it, but it's not going to be enough, though. It will not be enough. They do hold out in their home. They turtled in there. Sneak, though, try to make it. A play for the ages, but shut down. 4-2 now. Is this Pride Stark starting to mount a comeback, or is Mazer just slipping just, just a little bit? 
Hey, look, I think they might have even been watching the broadcast. Our analyst, Ryan, said, don't split your forces when you went off one. Turtle up, win a fight right there, take your numbers, because you know they have to split their forces to try to break both hills. So take your numbers, use it to shut the round down and play defense, and they did just that. Brilliant play by Pride Stark to actually finish off that round. But, Golden Boy, we go into the second half. The hills are gonna flip over to Welding and Fountains. We're gonna drop all the way back to the quickest respawns that we can, and we'll see what happens here if they can continue to come back in this one. Oh, an exclusive gets two onto Warrior and Vision. Starts it off nicely for Mazer. TJ, meat shield, that should help him for the time being. Can he kill this player? No, man, I like this, man. The second they saw that meat shield go up, they just started throwing all the bullets that they possibly could in his direction. And d and &E is going to go for Mazer as we look at the overhead map. Two members of Pride Target are going to be marching toward look, that look east the, side, the but rotations. they answered back immediately. I love that. Oh, my God. I love to, I love to watch teamwork. I just, it just makes me so giddy to see somebody get a call out and you see big rotations happen because you know you're going to go into a big team fight off of these secondary respawns because they're so quick. Visions is going to pick off Mortifies, though, so Exclusive is going to be here on that statue side having to fight himself a 2v1. He's going to pick up the first. He will get down, though, so trades coming out left and right right now. Xenon now trying to do something against Warrior. Warrior's got that meat shield. They're going to pistol him down, clean him up. They're going to have a free and easy break on he. I don't know if they know that Hezzy was right there, but they've definitely seen him and marked him out now, and it looks like Mazer might go for an overclock of that fountain side of the map. They're going to go for a double home hill push, I believe, unless you see those x-rays on the opposite side of the map. I can't tell exactly where they're headed. Yeah, it seems like they're kind of just biding their time because they know that they're going to take this lead eventually. But I, I would much rather... Go, oh, oh! <laughs> I was a little worried. A little worried, I, I won't lie. I saw that, uh, I think that was Dragon, and Hezzy kind of just crept up on him, but... You, you can go for those two home sides, and, and if you hold those, I mean, you're, you're going to come back into this, but that's going to be five down, Colin, and you're, you're, you're giving me the old, the old finger sign showing thing, and I like it because you're telling me that this is now where Mazer needs to push their advantage. Four seconds remaining on the clock here, and they got to go, and they got to stop this domination, and Mazer, they're going to own this one. Pride Star, can they do it? Can Chidwick they stop gets it? Hezzy, that's a big kill. Chidwick getting Hezzy, he's huge. Sneak is going to pick off Warrior. Chidwick caught in a corner. He gets picked off now. So they're going to continue to fight this. Sneak's they're going to so continue alive. to try to play some defense. But Sneak is doing everything he can. Sneak, an exclusive in the hill. Big kill by Dragons, but Dragons will get taken out now. So can exclusive fend off the last gasp of life from Pride Stark? He's going to get visions. He's going to continue to fight by himself. He doesn't get visions. He was too far. He I was gotta, at a chunk range. I got to give credit to that player for Pride Stark. That brief, brief denial of the domination allowed Pride Stark to bounce back. And now they might be able to counter this. They might be able to get in their face, but they got to do it right now. They have to fly at them, and they also need to decap all of these, all these not on they're not and on it's e. not going to happen, and that is it. it oh. You know, it was a brief, brief moment, oh. but that just oh. got out of hand for uh, for so long there. And I think that that exchange really, uh, yes, it went in the, uh, it went for Mazer because they had more of that territorial control. But man, that was like just insane plays at that at the last moment. That, they played brilliant defense. They kept filtering in off spawn, trying to make it happen, trying to get a double kill, trying to get somebody to be knocked off guard. Visions and Dragons with the double-double. But on the opposite side, you see Sneak, Hezzy, and Exclusive all with double-doubles. And for you at home, what I'm talking about when I say a double-double, that means they got double-digit kills, double-digit downs. You're doing a little bit of everything. You're trying to help your friends. You're trying to help yourself. Your stat line is nice and padded. I love to see it when multiple members of a team can do it all. It just means that you're laying down a lot of cover fire. You're supporting on those plays. And sometimes the support plays are more important than just the outright slaying. Mortifies, though, just trying to prove me wrong because he's all about the slaying, and he has been crushing this round. Still going to be alive. Vision's around the corner. He will be very weak and get chunked by exclusive. And that is going to open the floodgates now for exclusive and company to push on forward here. Mazer Gaming wants to make this one into a match point. Exclusive turned around. He tried to get one of the members that came off a respawn of Pride Stark, but it wasn't to be. They'll be able to single him out get him wiped off the map, and now Pride Stark will go for a three-man push onto this top side. Morty knows it. He gets the call. Mortifies getting the call from his teammate. He says, hey, look, look at all these marks I got for you. Get some Lancer on him. Make it harder for them to push straight into you. They're going to continue to run at you, but we might get it down. We might get an out, but we're going to have to rotate a little bit back, play a little bit of defense. One of them tries to run right him. in. Mortifies shuts it down. You can't He's going to look for the next one. He's going to look for the next one. He feels hungry. My man's ready to eat, baby. It's, uh, it's dinner time. 
for Morty's. I'll tell you that much. He has been an animal this whole game, tearing through Pride Stark. And I, it just, it's so impressive to see Mortifies come alive like this in game two. He did it in game one, and he's just doing it yet again. It's gonna be the uh, decap there, but Visions and Dragon, they're gonna try and stop this now. This is where look at this. This is where we see what Mortifies is really made out of. Oh, he's gonna be just weakened from that one shot. But and all four members of yes. Pride Stark were held up around. by that. Had they to had to around. turn around and go back for him. So that delays any push they can do on E or the Fountains area. So now Pride Stark is going to have to make some quick movements happen. And they might be able to threaten their own triple cap here. Actually, you're right. They might be able to make the triple cap happen because they got two members of Mazer down and they were all over by that home side for Mazer Gaming. Xenon, though, picks up his teammate. You got another guy on the steps. That's going to be three down currently for Pride Stark. Make that four, and they're staggering these respawns. And I think that this could very well be Mazer. They take out Warrior. This could be Mazer's round to win. They got to help Xenon here, though, because he goes down. Warrior will get the exchange, so good trade out there for them. They're going to take back over the E and the F hill. They're still going to be up by about 30 to maybe 40 points if this continues in this manner. Pride Stark needs to get a member into that E hill to get the break. They're going to have to get a break and get that second hill if they want to have a chance here because they are almost in no man's land. They might even have to push all the way to F. I, think they I do gotta believe push all they the have way. to get to F to get a break at least. They're going to have to stop the point accumulation of Mazer. And Mazer knows this. That's why they're going to be zoning them out, playing around. And any person that tries to push up for Pride Stark, they're going to get stopped by a member of Mazer. I love the spread that they're bringing to the table. And because they hold that critical hill, it doesn't matter what happens. And there goes the disrespect. Sneak is letting them know, Colin. He's letting them know. Hey man, and that's an NCAA athlete right in front of you, ladies and gentlemen. Sneak running track, and he's making Pride Stark run for the hills because they are now map and match point, Golden Boy. This is where the pressure cooker turns on. They're getting ready to fry him nice and crispy because you can no longer lose a round if you are Pride Stark. I just don't think Pride Stark ever dug themselves out of that hole, Colin. Losing on Harbor like that, yeah. that was rough. And it's reflecting here in the score. Yes, you kind of have to treat every game as its own thing, but something sits in the back of your mind. You always have those what ifs. Look what if I would have done this? What if I would have done that better? And, you know, players will say, yeah, you know, we didn't really think about that. But, I mean, I've been in this situation myself competing, and I know, I know that you d tend to dwell on these things, especially when you're in a game and it's just not going well for you. And we're going to see the boom shot get placed, that dreaded boom shot that Mazer took off the map last time. They put it back down here in the Pistons, so they're going to make the fight about that yet again. Dragons goes down early off of it. Chidwick gets cleaned up, and that's four dead already. That's four dead already. Five man, dead Ryan, now, Colin. He's calling it out. He's saying, John, John, he's calling for the end of this game. He knows that it could be all over but the crying. And now we see Hesse with it. the boom shot. He might go for a little Hail Mary for a little bit of insult to injury, but he knows they need the E heal, so the he's not going to go. There it goes. Does he connect? We won't get to know, but 34 seconds, and the final round comes through. Mazer Gaming, two O's, Pride Stark. Pride Stark, they went for that last gasp. It worked out for them last time when they had that boom shot down low, and it forced Mazer to use their block to take it out. It was that effort. It was a, a, a good opportunity for them to do it, good moment for them to do it, but it just was not the meant, meant to be. Pride Stark, very impressive. Or excuse me, Mays are very impressive. That makes things interesting. So officially, third place, completely upset in their pool of death. They will advance or devance <laughs> to the losers bracket. <laughs> unadvance. <laughs> unadvance. <laughs> unadvance. Unadvance. Uh, unadvance. Devance. Uh, de devance. You know, it's de unadvance. Unadvance. De unadvance. Yeah, yes, there it is. It's like double great. negatives. Fantastic yeah, that's stuff that's there. Worth, yeah. They will digress to the losers bracket. There we go. And Space Station, yes. for the first time in, in quite a while, does not make it to the winners bracket. They are going to ruin someone's time in losers bracket. I feel so yeah. bad for whoever has to go up against them in losers bracket when you're expecting to play maybe a lesser team, maybe expecting to play someone to get a good warm up in for, for later in the bracket. No, you have to play a team who's placed top four in many of our events that sucks that does that does but also on the flip side Mazer gaming takes home second place a team that we called in our pregame show to kick off the tournament yesterday a dark horse team I told you they were in Dallas they were in Mexico City as the vanquish squad placed top eight at both of those events with the same roster 
Zenon now is added to that roster, plus the core four. That's a dangerous squad here, right? And they have seen some success with Zenon in the past, right? They did get, a, I believe, a top six placing in New Orleans. They actually beat my team in New Orleans, gave my first ever pool play loss. And they have Mortifies coming back to the team, a player they played with for many, many events. Went over to play with Rise Nation, a couple other teams, took a small break, and now he's back with his boys. He's back with his teammates that he's played with for so long. And they're looking pretty strong. But for me, I said it before, this team always looks so good on Saturday, and then we sometimes see a different team on Sunday. I want to see them get rid of the inconsistencies because they're honestly one of our teams that have one of the best teamwork out of all of our pro teams, right? You saw their, their downs in that map, 13, 14, 15, and 16 yeah, downs, wow. respectively. They use their Lancers well. They rotate together. They are a good team. I just need to see it on a Sunday. Do you guys think these, uh, this Major Gaming squad has what it takes? Do you think they could slip in the top four for the first time in Sneaky's career? I think so. If Mortify keeps playing like that, I definitely think it's a possibility. Um, but it's, it, I think to kind of just piggyback on Ryan, you know, you, you get teams on a Saturday and then you get teams on a Sunday. And if they keep playing like this, it's a possibility, but it's, it's going to be very hard. They're gonna, have, they're gonna have to do a lot more than what they did in these two maps because I hate to say it, when you're going against an open bracket team, even though they dominated them in the second map, they kept taking these 1Vs, they kept forgetting that teamwork that Ryan talked so much about. And come Sunday, when you fight these top tier teams, if you try to 1v1 them, the gun skill's gonna not be in your favor, baby. And we talked about it on map one too, how many times they sort of got counter wiped in situations where they probably shouldn't be you know, exposing themselves to that scenario, right? Against yeah. a team like Denial, against a team like Optic Gaming, you cannot make Make those mistakes because they will capitalize yep. every it single was like time. At least three times we had counter wipes happen, and, and that just wasn't pretty. It, it was not, even though they were able to bounce back, it's like that should not happen. And to kind of piggyback again, denial optic, they're gonna punish that. I mean, hell, even Space Station, I think, are gonna punish that too, right? You know, oh, I, yeah. I think they, yeah, they did win against Space Station, but still, that's like something you gotta bear in mind, right? 100%. Of course, if, if anyone here has been watching for a long time, you know the storyline of the man Sneaky, the captain of this team, I believe, if it's not exclusive. And yeah, I mean, he's the leader, undoubtedly. He's the, he's the emotional leader. Emotional leader. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was Definitely say, the leader up there. Sneaky said yesterday, it's all on me. If I get toxic, we're going to fall to pieces. Yep. If I stay up, if I stay hype, and I keep you guys going, that's why I love doing those interviews, because it's a little bit of insight yep. you might not know helps you explain why they might have stayed up or stayed down. So a born leader indeed. And if anyone knows, if anyone knows Sneaky, they know he's a professional in every sense of the word. He is a Division I athlete running track for Illinois State University while maintaining full-time academics, while maintaining a full-time career as a professional Gears of War player. 95% of the pro players in this room focus on Gears and only Gears, let alone the other two things that they have to worry about. Yeah, yeah, I know. And that's kind of crazy to, to keep in mind, right? Like to be a Division One athlete to play uh, Gears of War at a top level, travel around and compete and do all that stuff. I mean, it's wild. That's, that's wild, that's man. Very impressive. This, yeah. Very, and, and very impressive. It's a little intimidating. The, the, yeah. the <laughs> time management required to make all those work again at a high level is, is out of control. So yeah. for him to be able to do all these things and continue, obviously he's getting better at Gears too, right? His teams are improving over time. And so hats off to him, man. That, that's, that's, that's a really cool, honestly, a really yeah. cool accomplishment. And, and with that professionalism comes a professional approach. You know that Sneaky's not going to be content with that performance from his team. You know he's going to get the troops together and say, look, let's review the VOD. Let's talk about what went wrong because we can't be giving up four or five rounds to this team. Like, yeah. look, we expect to beat a team in the winner's bracket like Optic Gaming, Denial, etc. Speaking of winner's bracket, Randy, one I, say, more I think seven. they do play Denial because they, they should be so number two in Pool D plays number, uh, yeah, number one in Pool B, yep. which will be Denial. So we talk about making those mistakes. A team like Denial will take advantage of that all day, every day. Denial also has seen pretty good success against this group of players in the past. So it's going to be a tough yeah. one. they got to bring their A-plus game at that point. Exactly. And you know what that means? Officially, the end of pool play. The next match yes. you will see on stream yeah. will be Ghost Gaming, the Latin American sensations who just got done with an autograph signing right behind us and hundreds of people lining up. They'll be going up against a, a red-hot reciprocity squad who won the last two of their matches and are looking for some vengeance against this Ghost Gaming squad. It's going to be a great matchup. I believe we're going to have Blaze and PR back on the desk. But that's it for now with my man Ryan. We got Golden Boy. We got Colin. That's it for us. We're going to jump to a quick break. When we come back, some more Gears of War action in just one moment. Don't go anywhere, guys.